anyway, Saban made me uh, vice president of development of the uh, of the company. Um, he was basically, as I said, uh, giving music to uh, Deke, writing music for Deke, but he was also learning about making cartoons himself without necessarily making it known to the world that that's what he wanted to do. And Shucky was doing movies. He, he did a movie with Priscilla Presley, uh, starring Priscilla Presley. And it was a decent first effort, a uh, directorial effort. Uh, I, meantime, was trying to come up with shows. I, For example, I pitched in one uh, meeting, I pitched a show called Patrol Car. I thought this was a great idea, Patrol Car. I said, well, it won't cost us anything. We'll just drive around in police cars, okay? And when the cops stop somebody on the street, you know, we'll get that interaction. No, nah, no, nah, that'll never work. And a year later, cops comes out and it's like, no, but see, I, me, I, I, you know, uh, same thing. I had to show what will they, what will they think of next? Okay, I said, you know, people come in with inventions, okay, things that haven't come up yet, okay. We'll get a bunch of businessmen, and now nah, they didn't like that either. And so, <laughs> and so, yeah. Anyway, finally, um, I can't, you know, again, freeze frame. I had always been a movie trivia show. Uh, you know, Ellen and I said, why don't we just do it as TV? All right, fine. So I created a show. I think Ellen came up with the name Cowish Potatoes. I don't think I did. Um, but uh, so Couch Potatoes came into existence. Once again, I hosted the run through, uh, which is on YouTube. And um, it worked because A, I was a good enough host that I could make it work, but B, they weren't expecting surprise guests. You know, the whole point of Couch Potatoes was not just bringing in people from television shows, but bringing in characters from television shows. What I wanted was a show, you know, again, I told, I grew up watching Superman, so I wanted to bring back Jack Larson and Noel Neal, who would play Jimmy Olsen and Lois Lane on Superman, but come in looking for Mr. Kent, okay, and staying in character. Nobody cared what they were doing nowadays. You know, we had Buffalo Bob Smith from the Howdy Doody show. So, Bob, what are you doing now that you're 70? Nobody's interested, okay? Have them come in as characters and stay in character. And so for the first, for the couch potato presentation, um, I had Donna Douglas come in as Ellie Mae Clampett. She's coming in, she's looking for a pet pig. And I had her ask some questions, you know, uh, Mr. Dry, who did the secretary in for Mr. Drydale, you know, live next door. And I asked her, you know, uh, Sherman Oaks is right here in the Valley. I said, hey, you guys don't live in Beverly Hills. Where do you live now? We're the Sherman Oakies and, you know, Anyway, that worked. Uh, there, was, there would always be a knock on the door. Later on in the presentation, um, we're talking about the Dick Van Dyke show, and I'm talking about the 1988 Emmys, and uh, Richie Petri comes in for the Dick Van Dyke show. I said, oh, Richie Petri. And then more Richie Petris came in. They had a pick out, which is the real Richie Petri. Anyway, simply by the fact that the executives didn't realize that I was bringing in guest stars, they fell in love with that idea. We sold it to Group W from that one run through. So the Couch Potatoes presentation went as well as better than even I expected. And there were all sorts of different elements that I, I brought in. Lieutenant Columbo's on the phone. Um, I did a little Mission Impossible takeoff. I used old commercials. I had Ronald Reagan uh, selling soap on one of the commercials. Just a lot of stuff that, you know, expect the unexpected is an old phrase you'll hear on a lot of game shows. Get ready to expect the unexpected. Come up with a new line. Uh, so it's ironically is now expected because they say it's- Yes, it is. Yes, unfortunately. So um, so I finished Couch Potatoes, but um, Haim still, uh, you know, he was, Haim was busy doing a lot of stuff. He, he had purchased a show from Japan, uh, which he was calling Power Rangers which I don't know what the hell that meant, Power Rangers. It was this horrible Japanese footage that he had acquired. Because uh, you know, the, the amazing thing about Haim, even then, we only had 20 people working for the company at that time. Uh, and now he's got maybe 20 million across the world. I have no idea. But uh, he, uh, I had come up with a show called Rock IQ. And uh, there was only one place to sell it. And that was uh, MTV. So I wrote it up. And I wrote basically a pilot of it. 
And I went to New York, I flew to New York by myself. This is how much Haim trusted me. Um, and I found, you know, I took, at that point, MTV was on one floor of a building uh, in New York City, one receptionist, okay? Imagine this, you go up to the receptionist and there are two doors, okay? The door on the left says MTV. The door on the right says VH1. Because at that point, they were, in the place was so small. This was just remote control was just coming on. I think that was the first show they were doing, first uh, game show -ish or you know TV show they were doing. Remote control was just coming on the air and they were fledgling network. So they could only afford VH1. They found me a little space to host run through. So I borrowed a couple of guys and I got some contestants and somehow in the space of three days, I wound up producing and hosting a show called Rock IQ for MTV and it almost sold. I mean, they loved it, but uh, they went with another show. I forget, I forget the name of it, but I only did it in three days. Uh, and for me at that time, you know, Chuck had sent me, you know, out as a chaperone, but I, I hadn't been gone to New York in a long time and got to see my family and all sorts of stuff. So that was cool. And uh, that was the end of Rock IQ. And uh, again, we finished Couch Potatoes. And uh, so I came back from New York, um, not disappointed that I didn't sell Rock IQ. It wasn't that great of a show, but it, it was cute. Uh, and we had sold couch potatoes. So um, it was a no brainer. You know, I'd worked with uh, Mark Summers as a warm up on Merrill Heater's Lucky Rollers, which, which starred uh, Alex Trebek, uh, which unfortunately didn't sell. But I promised Mark uh, that if indeed I sold a show, that he would host it. And uh, Couch Potatoes was it. And Mark really did a phenomenal job. And Dennis Rosenblatt, who I told you earlier, you know, who was, <laughs> who was always angry at me for ending the stupid dating game too long, too, too, I let it go too long. Uh, I had him direct it, which he did a very nice job of. Unfortunately for me, uh, Group W insisted on making changes, which, Hi, I'm, you know, this was the first networky show that, um, you know, it was on NBC in New York. Uh, it was syndicated, but, you know, it was all over. But at least we were on NBC, I think seven o'clock. I might be wrong. Um, and um, the whole idea for me was for them not to be out of character, for Natalie Schaefer to come in as Lovey Howell and looking Where's Gilligan? For yeah, or whatever. But Group W didn't want that because they knew it would be easier to get like Walter Koenig, uh, who was the only one from Star Trek that was willing to do uh, couch potatoes. You know, number one, <coughs> he didn't really want to beam in. Yeah, how many shows am I going to beam people in on? Anyway, uh, he didn't want to get dressed up as as Chekhov and he wanted to act, ask the questions as Walter Koenig. And uh, so Group W acquiesced and it, it was split up so that you're too young to remember Hill Street Blues, but the very first show we did was with Dennis Franz, who made a career out of playing tough cops or tough bad guys. Didn't matter. He worked for uh, Michael, uh, for Stephen Bochco and his partner and uh, did Hill Street Blues, he did LA Law, and uh, this character, Andy Sipowitz of Dennis Franz, he was always breaking down doors, so in the first time, you know, Summers, where are you? And so we, we'd start off with him in character and then Mark would say, okay, and then start talking to him as Dennis Franz. And that dichotomy, um, for me at least, didn't work. I can't speak for the audience, but it's not the show that I wanted to do. Likewise, um, you know, the couch up round, which I thought, oh, how clever am I? Instead of a catch up round, it's a couch up round. Um, they changed that. They changed enough things on me that um, the show already uh, only went one season, but at least I got a created by credit. And uh, oh, and the next door neighbor, um, uh, have you seen Couch Potatoes? I have seen it and I know what you're going to talk about. So, All right. Um, you know, we had a next door neighbor as an announcer. That was not my idea. It wasn't Hyam's idea. It wasn't Ellen's idea. Um, came from some outside source, but that didn't work. 
And it really didn't work because it was up to me to write stuff for this gentleman, um, Joe. Joe Olasky. Uh, wonderful, yes, Joe Olasky, who was a wonderful impressionist. But um, I won't go into details, but you know, writing a stand-up routine for him as bumpers in and out of commercial, it just didn't work. You know, I, I was trying not to do a game show, game show, but that's what it, it was a game show with guest stars, which was enough, but then having the next door neighbor doing a comedy bit and then back to Mark. And then it was just, it was too much, you know? So I, I, I didn't like the whole next door neighbor thing. I thought it was unnecessary and uh, maybe even a little bit confusing, but again, I got, if you watch the credits on that show, it says, you know, supervising producer, David Greenfield, written by David Greenfield, created by David Greenfield. Like, okay, and I'll split them up or something. Uh, looks stupid to me in, in uh, retrospect.